Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be doing a quick overview of the full workflow from start to finish on how you can put together a character like this in just a few hours. This one's going to be fast, so start your stopwatch, let's jump in. Okay, first I started off with doing a rough block out of the character's shape. In this first part, I predominantly used just the rounded cube object and the elastic deformed sculpting brush to get the rough, general shape of each body part. I used a lot of Shift-D to duplicate the shapes I already have to build the next one, and I pretty much just worked my way down starting from the head. I thought I'd try something a little bit more stylized and cartoony with exaggerated features as you can see with the neck here. Don't get too wrapped up in how it looks at this point, just try and get the general shape. At this stage, I block out the main body parts like the head, neck, chest, pelvis, shoulders, biceps, forearms, thighs and shins as you can see here. I also like to add in knees, elbows, pecs and butt cheeks for some added detail using the mirror modifier. For the hands to keep things simple and fast, I curled the fingers into a fist shape from the get-go. For the foot, I just traced out a rough shape of a shoe sole, based it all up and then extruded it upwards into the shape of a foot and then some light sculpting to improve the shape of it. This stage took me about 15 or 20 minutes. Take your time in this stage as this is really going to be laying the groundwork for everything going forward. Once I've blocked everything out, I like to then refine each of the rough shapes by using the voxel remesh function. I select each object, control tab into sculpt mode, then press shift R to lower the voxel size, then control R to perform the voxel remesh. This allows me to sculpt with a little bit more detail than the first stage, and then smooth and clean everything up so that they fit together a little bit better. You can see that some of the body parts are really out of alignment and very blocky and misshapen here, but by increasing the resolution, we can tighten everything up. Try and focus on getting the right placement of each body part, dial in proportions, and improve the shape. Here I'm still just sticking with the elastic to form brush. I also start adding in a few more details like the eyebrow ridge, eyes, and nose. This stage took me about 25 minutes. 20 plus 25 is 45. Oh god, this is taking forever already. Once I've smoothed and cleaned everything up, I like to now select each of the objects and then press Control J to join them into one. Here I start with the head, selecting the skull, eyebrow ridge, nose, jaw, chin, and ears, and then I press Control J to join them and make them one object. Then I can Control Tab into Sculpt Mode, press Shift R to lower the voxel size a little bit, but then Control R to perform the voxel remesh. And then I can start smoothing out the sculpt and adding in details with the sculpt draw, crease, and clay strips brushes. At first I thought I would do an open mouth, so I used the mask brush to paint in the shape of a mouth, then control I to invert it, and then the elastic deform brush to form the opening. Then I press control R to remesh the object and smooth everything out again. To join the head and sculpt in these rough details took about 10 minutes. Okay, now onto the eyes. For the bottom eyelid, I'm adding in a rounded cube, then cutting in half and facing up the middle part. For the eyeball itself, I'm going to turn on proportional editing and move the middle vertex in a little bit to create a concave shape for the iris. Then I'll delete the middle vertex, extrude in and face up to create the pupil. Then I'm going to shade smooth, add a bevel modifier, and then a subdivision surface modifier after it. Then N on the keyboard for the side panel and increasing the mean bevel weight to create some sharp edges. Make sure to set the limit method to weight in the bevel modifier over on the right. Then lastly, another rounded cube for the cornea. This stage took about five minutes. And we're at about an hour at this point, just humming along. For the hair, I'm going to use the Sculpt Mask tool. Starting with the sides, going to paint in the shape like this. Then going to use the Mask Extract function to create a new object from this mask. I'll apply the Mask Extract modifier, then Voxel Remesh. Then some sculpting to dial in the shape a little bit more. You can use the Lasso Mask and Mask Slice and Fill Hole functions to chop parts off like this. I have the Mask Slice function saved to my Quick Favorites menu, which you can access by pressing Q. Then for the top part of the hair, just a rounded cube again. The Snake Hook brush is great for getting a fun, sort of flowing hair look quickly. I turn off sculpting symmetry in the top right corner so that I can create this swooping look to one side. This stage took about 10 minutes or so. How am I doing on time? Now for the eyebrows, I'm turning on snap to face with project individual elements on, adding in a single vertex, then extruding it into a square shape like this. You can get the single vertex option by enabling the built-in Blender add-on called Add Mesh Extra Objects, then a mirror modifier, then a solidify modifier with a thickness of about negative two. Then I add a bevel modifier and move it above the subdivision surface modifier in the stack, change the limit method to weight, and on the keyboard and changing the mean bevel weight to one for the edges to give a more squared off look. You can play with the amount and segments to get the look you want, Make sure the bevel is above the subdivision surface modifier in the stack. Now I'm going to move on to joining up the fingers and palm and then smoothing and sculpting in some minor details. Similar to before, just selecting all the parts of the hand and then Control J to join them. Then Shift R to lower the voxel size, Control R to perform the voxel remesh, and then some smooth and crease brush to start adding in some details. 
Now onto the fingernails. Here I'm using the mask tool again, then pressing Control I to invert the mask, then using the mask inflate filter to indent the nail bed a little bit, and then Control I to invert again, and then mask extract to create a fingernail. Once I have that, I just use the sculpt brush to smooth and shape so that it better fits inside the nail bed I just made. I then just repeat this process for all the other fingers. For the boots, just adding in a cylinder, then Control J to join it up with the foot, then some light sculpting to give it a better shape. Control R to add in some control loops and get a closer shape to the shin and ankle. Then into sculpt mode, Shift R and Control R to increase the voxel resolution to really dial it in. Here I'm sculpting in some ankle bones on both sides, then some smoothing. And that's good enough for me for the boot. Now I'm selecting all the parts that make up the bodysuit and then Control J to join. Control R to voxel remesh and then sculpting in some more details on the musculature. For the body, I'm mostly using the smooth crease and scrape brushes to clean things up a bit. Even though this is a really cartoony character, I'm still trying to keep realistic anatomy in mind as I go. I'd recommend googling something like human a corsh to get a better idea of the human musculature. Also making small adjustments to the proportions by making the elastic deform brush really big and pulling things around. Okay, now onto the suit and accessories to add another layer of detail. To make it look like he's wearing a suit more, I'm using the mask brush here, Control i to invert, and then using the deform brush to create a hole for the neck. That way we'll get some better shadowing around his neck area. Then more lasso mask tool to paint in the shape of the classic red undies. Then mask extract, add some thickness, apply the modifier, and then some smoothing and sculpting to refine the shape. Now for a belt, using snap to face again to draw some faces around the waist like we did for the eyebrows, and then a solidify modifier, subdivision surface modifier, and shade smooth. Also added in a simple circle with some extrusions for the belt buckle. For the signature S logo on the chest, just using more snap to face. Here I'm drawing in the base of the logo with a sort of upside down triangle, then facing everything up in the middle. I try and create an edge loop around the edge of the shape here so that I can get a nicer inward extrusion in just a second. Adding a bevel modifier and then a subdivision surface modifier and then shade smooth. Then selecting the inner faces and extruding them in to create a little indent for the S. Now drawing in the S shape within the indent. Here I try and make sure I have the same number of vertices on each side of the S so that I can face them up nicely. Then again, solidify modifier, subdivision and shade smooth and then adjusting the placement to clean up the shape. For the cape, pretty simple, just use a cube elongated to fit his body, then extruding it a bit to give some thickness, then control tab into sculpt mode, shift R and control R to voxel remesh and give it some more geometry so we can sculpt it. Once I position it on his shoulders, I use the mask tool to freeze that part into place and then I sculpt a little bit more freely on the rest of the cape to give it that flowy feel. I try and get some wavy lines from each angle, especially the bottom edge like this. Woo wee, this part took a while, about 40 minutes. You might want to get up and stretch a bit if you've been hammering away this whole time. Now onto adding in some wrinkle details on the cape and bodysuit using the crease brush. Just some simple lines and areas where I'd expect some wrinkles like the elbows, crotch, knees, and armpits. I didn't like the face I did originally, it kind of reminded me of a really bad Wallace and Gromit, so I went with something a little bit more stoic and angular to create a sense of power. The scrape brush is really handy here to create a more squarish, angular look. To retopologize a little bit quicker, I went with a free automatic remesher called Auto Remesher. To use this program, we need to select our high poly objects, then go File, Export, and select OBJ and Save. To get Auto Remesher, search Auto Remesher and go to the GitHub link that appears, and then click here to download the program. It's totally free and doesn't require a sign up. Once you've done that, open Auto Remesher and click File Open and navigate to your OBJ file. It will automatically remesh your high poly sculpt, then save this object. Back in Blender, import your newly retopologized OBJ file, add a multi-resolution modifier and subdivide it a few times, then add a shrink wrap modifier and make the target the high poly sculpt. I find it helps sometimes to change the wrap method to project and tick the negative box. Repeat this process for all of your high poly sculpted objects before exporting the OBJ. Sometimes it helps to apply a decimate modifier to lower the poly count a little bit. 
This makes it easier for auto remesher to work. Then just the same process as before, export as OBJ. Then in auto remesher, open up the OBJ file and let it do its thing. Then save this new OBJ. Then back in Blender, import, add a multi-resolution modifier, subdivide and shrink wrap with the target set to the high poly sculpt. Doing this by hand would probably have taken a few hours. So this is a nice area where you can really move things along. Now I'm going to add in some smaller details to the low poly remeshed objects with the multi-resolution modifier. To do this, make sure you apply the shrink wrap modifier first. Then you can add things like seams and piping and tighten up the sharpness of edges and lines like here on the face. Now I'm adding in a standard three light system commonly seen in photography, TV, and movies. This can be done quickly by enabling the built-in blender add-on called tri-lights. It adds a key light, fill light, and backlight. Typically you want your key light to be double the power of your fill and backlights, but you can experiment. For the UV unwrap stage, I'm gonna use another quick method to move things along a little bit faster. And this is by using Blender's automatic smart UV project. Just select everything, tab into edit mode, press U and select smart UV project from the menu. I would suggest increasing the island margin amount to something like 0.1. You may want to also go to the UV menu and select pack islands. Okay now into baking. Here I'm selecting all of my objects and assigning one material to all of them. You can do this quickly by pressing Control L and selecting materials from the list. Let's click new image, name it AO. In the shader editor add an image texture node and then select your new AO image. Now with everything selected, switch to the Cycles engine if you aren't already there. Switch the Bake type to AO and then click the Bake button. Here I'm adding another Image Texture node, creating another new image and calling it Diffuse. In Texture Paint mode with the Fill bucket, I'll fill in each part of the model. Now I'm using a Mix RGB node set to Multiply and mixing the Diffuse and AO nodes to get a nice enhanced shadow look. Here I'm doing some manual painting of the underwear and the face. Now to introduce some shine, adding another Image Texture and new image and calling it roughness, then painting in some shiny parts in the logo, boots, hair, and face. Now for the pose, let's add in the Rigify rig. You can get this by enabling the built-in add-on called Rigify. I have a more detailed tutorial on this process. Card should be above. Essentially, just line up the skeleton with your model as best you can. If you want, you can delete the face bones, but make sure you delete the bone hidden inside the head bone, or else the rig will not generate properly. Here, I'm not gonna move the fingers, so I'm not too concerned with the exact placement here. Make sure to select both your model and the rig, press Control A and select all transforms before the next step. Then select everything, shift select the rig last, Control P and then select automatic weights. Blender's automatic weighting system is not the best, so you'll likely need to do a little bit of manual adjustment in the weight paint mode here. Here I just want the cape to follow the whole body, so I just use the assign and remove vertex group buttons with the weight set to 1.0 to have it follow just one of the spine bones. Here the belt buckle is being influenced by the arm a little bit, so I just use the remove button again to remove it from all of the arm bones and assign it to one of the spine bones. This should be good enough for a simple pose. You can also weight paint with a brush. Here you can see the head is not fully influenced by the head bone, as denoted by the heat map in weight paint mode. So I'm going to paint it all red so that it does not deform oddly when I rotate the head later. Switching to pose mode, I use predominantly the yellow and red IK handles of the Rigify rig to move the character into a pose. Please note that the gray armature bones will not move at this point. They are only to set up the rig. In the event that some parts of your model become misaligned when you move the rig, you can also use the sculpting deform brush to make some adjustments. And finally, for a quick turntable animation, you can enable the built-in Blender add-on called Turnaround. Just select your model, press N on your keyboard for the side panel, go to the Animate tab, click Turnaround, adjust your camera and resolution settings, and then press Play on the time bar at the bottom. And that's it. Yay. One way you can make a character from nothing in just under five hours. I hope you got something out of this, however small, to make your character workflow a little bit faster. A few quick shout outs this week. Shout out to Steny98 on Instagram who finished their first sculpting project with the bear tutorial. Looks like me when my render crashes. Particular QB on Instagram who did a great job with the bear tutorial as well. Love the grass and fur on this one. Tofigo YG on Twitter who also finished their first sculpt with the bear and added some spice with a cool particle effect on Suzanne. 
And to AA Ron on Instagram, who did a super cool alien character. Love the eyes. Great job to all you guys. Thanks for the shoutouts. If you'd like to be featured here, tag me somewhere, and I'll put you in my next video. Feel free to ask questions below. I try to answer all of them, and sometimes I actually help. Whoa. If you want to share your art or ask a question, I have a little group on Facebook going. Link is below. Or you can just hit me up on social media somewhere. I love seeing your guys' stuff. I have Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Discord, Twitch, Gumroad, and Udemy as well. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. I hope it helped, and see you in the next one.